bubble beep. Aloha and welcome back to another space weather update. I'm going to quickly go over the sun diving comet, the new moon, and a few other little significant parts in the space weather today. There are some anomalies and I haven't done one of these videos in a little while. So those of you who aren't on my Patreon, please join for free or with any membership option you would prefer. I do monthly guardian trading workshops for those of you who would like to invest significantly in Ascension Diaries. That would be your reward. So I'd be happy to have you at those workshops. We are currently here, December 13th, 2023. We are just leaving a new moon. We Our new moon was yesterday on 12-12, Tuesday 12-12. It was in the sign of Sagittarius, and it may have concerned your liver, hips, thighs, and sacrum area of your body. Now, I must inform all of you as a bit of a reminder, women... There are two classes of women out there who are menstruating. There is those who menstruate during the new moon and there are those that ovulate during the new moon. Those who menstruate during the new moon are the white moon women. Those who ovulate during the new moon are the red moon women. There are two literal different classes and parties of women who are menstruating on this planet. And when they do, it is a significant electromagnetic shift that it affects the whole household. It'll affect the whole village. So for me, it's very important as a woman to know where I'm at, where my fellow females are at, and how we can more efficiently shift the responsibilities and our energy as we do these monthly cycles of cleansing. Men, this is significant for you to learn as well, just, just in case you weren't aware of that. It's worth knowing. Now, today's anomaly is a sun diving comet, which in this footage you can see actually goes behind the shadow created here from, I think, a coronal hole, which is bizarre, but it could have been a sunspot that made this shadow pulling the light in so you can't see it. But you can see there's still matter there because the shadow actually obstructs the light of the comet, which is interesting. So there's a significant amount of lack of light here that it obstructs the light from the comet from in the view of the satellite, the Lasco Soho satellite there, which is significant to me and very interesting. Here's a close up view of that particular object going into the sun. And I just want to make note, there it goes, that the sun also releases a coronal mass ejection from the area that this comet whizzes past very significant, very normal. When you do see this happen, I would recommend you go to the ISWA, this particular chart, for details about where and what direction that coronal mass ejection left. You, the, the sun here is the white, and if you can see slightly, there is an ejection coming out right here. Disturbing, right here, follow my mouse. Okay, so very hard to watch this one. Usually it's much more significant and interesting. So perhaps that coronal mass ejection wasn't that powerful. We will find out though shortly as it takes about three days for that to show up here in the solar wind data. So when we see the solar wind start to spike in two and a half days, we can say, oh, that might have been from the comet flying past the sun and it may have an interesting mingling of energies for us, a little bit more unique, I would say. So that could be very significant, I'd say, on the 14th, 15th. But we'll just see. We'll see what kind of fairy dust that sent our way and maybe what kind of flavor or difference it's going to cause in the behavior of our beloved planet here. So here on the surface of the sun, because here you can't see the surface, it, they block it out so you can see the coronal activity, but we want to look right now at the direct surface. These are the coronal holes, these are areas which the it's weaker, so the solar wind is actually pouring out of it and pouring into space. So when these holes get really big, the, the solar wind off the sun gets faster and more dense, pretty much. Now these are where the sunspots are, these are the areas of high magnetic intensity so this is even where the light can't escape. 
because it's so magnetic there. It's pulling right back. And then if these opposite polarities magnetic spots get close to each other, we get those solar flashes. We get those, those solar flares that are significant. And that's what everybody gets excited about. One, when you want to start tracking the solar flares over a few days, you go to the X-ray flux data because we were watching the X-ray radiation of these solar flares. That's one of the wavelengths of light we can actually see them with, with our technology. So here we go. This is seven days. Over the last seven days, you can see all these little significant moments where the data shifts. Those are little, those are little flashes. That's little X-ray radiation flashes off the sun. But the more significant ones are the ones that get reported. Space Weather Live is an app you can download to get that information. Now, seven days, you can see there was a significant solar flare that happened on the 8th. It was an M-class. You can see up here, it doesn't say in that little square, but if you trace it over to the right, you can see it was in the M category, a higher M nearly an X, so a significant solar flare on the 8th. But since then, they've reduced in intensity. And in the last one day, you can see that very, very little activity, I would say, is happening. There's a lot less variance and movement here. In the last six hours, even less. It's been very calm. So I'm recording this 7.22 a.m. here in Phoenix on the 13th of December. And after I upload this, there could be a significant solar flare. So that's often what happens when I do these videos. So I'm just warning you, <laughs> you may, if you're new to this, you may have something to study right away. So get that app, Space Weather Live, put those notifications on and enjoy the fun with us. Over the last three days, the solar wind has calmed down since the 8th, excuse me, since the 11th. The 11th, we have a significant amount of time missing from the solar wind data not only the solar, yeah, just overall, all of the solar wind and every single aspect of it, there's no data for three hours about on this particular resource, which is pretty much the resource. There's not many other options for us. This is all being funneled through pretty much one, I would say, governing body and this goes into public safety and so on because there is such a significant difference between the education of people who are working in this field and those average people who are out here just living our lives and having families and participating in the market. It's a significant difference in the education. So there is a bit of a, a lack of communication, I would say, in general to the public about certain details. And that's why I'm here, because unfortunately, I wasn't satisfied with that, and here we are. So, more evidence I'm gathering from other resources, non-American, to witness and b observe the electromagnetic frequencies in our atmosphere on the extremely low spectrum, because the extremely low spectrum is our human bodies as well, and it affects us on a molecular anatomical level <laughs> so these very low extremely low frequencies in our atmosphere are being monitored by this russian university tomsk university and they have been so gracious to put this publicly online even though there has been a little bit of drama this last year about it thankfully they're still up here even though there's ads go for it you can still see plenty you can get what you need to show that there has been some anomalies. So on the 11th, we had missing solar wind data. What was going on on the 11th according to the Russian electromagnetic extremely low frequency instruments here? So from 0 hertz to 40 hertz, which is, again, extremely low frequencies because we've got hertz that are going really fast in our environment as well. There's a huge variety of frequencies in this bath and this soup of life we're in. It's a beautiful thing. But every single one of them is significant in my opinion. So what was happening on the 11th? Well, according to Russia, there was some extremely low frequency amplification going on. But it doesn't look natural to me. It looks far more industrial. 
is maybe the word I'm looking for. So when you're seeing a lot of very straight vertical and horizontal lines, to me, that's industrial in inputs because only machines can make these exact readings over time with certain frequencies. Only a machine can make the same noise over a, a significant amount of hours. You know what I'm saying? Or only a machine can make a f make the frequencies between 0 and 40 make a noise at the same amplitude at once. You know what I'm saying? This is what this chart is significant signifying for us here over time the x-axis here on the bottom is time and again frequency is the y-axis here so from 0 to 40 Hertz during this one particular time like just a few minutes it looks like there was a significant reading but over time the 20 Hertz on the background has all has been going and going and going. Some of us think it's actually actually at 19 hertz, and if you look up the significance of that, 19 hertz is actually there's evidence of that online that 19 hertz is actually a very uncomfortable frequency for human beings. In general, it is the frequency of pain potentially and like discomfort. So if you can imagine that there is some sort of reason for this frequency to just register in the atmospheric background here as constantly, not a single break, not a single break, not through the day, not through the night, it never stops. So that to me is machinery. Then you see down here in, this, in the 21, sorry, 25 hertz area, all of the sudden there is almost like voice like this almost looks like a music signature those of you who you know DJ or do music you see a lot of these and you start to learn how to even read them when you can see uh, what kind of music this would actually play <laughs> and uh, how you would remix this you know during this particular part of the song I might loop in the other song that I'm playing for example <laughs> But, let's see, was any other song looped in during that time in specific? Mm, maybe. Something going on up here. But, yeah, this is almost like somebody's talking. <laughs> Did they play an emergency announcement somewhere? You know? You know what I'm saying? This is, this looks like significant. This looks like music or something. So, what was the message here? Is this being uh, subconsciously, is this noise subconsciously being injected into the atmosphere? These are the questions we have to ask with this particular instrument and maybe showing us that. Again, you see all these horizontal, or sorry, vertical lines here over a span, they're evenly spaced as well. This is a concern. So this 1212 looking to be was, do something was up. You know, 11, 12, or 12, 11, you know, the day before, still something going on for sure. Even this, this is bizarre for me. I have a very trained eye for this. So looking at this, there's anomalies literally everywhere. I could talk for hours about all the weird little things I'm seeing on here. And some people do. Some people go into this. Some people see shapes and pictures and, and then their divine feminine side of their brain starts filling in the gaps. And I would say giving them significant I would say symbolic, uh, intuitive hits almost, symbolic hits to kind of uh, hum give a personal, I would say uh, give it almost a human or give it a, almost a storybook-like explanation. And so instead of me just going, well, this line was weird and this line is weird, that to me is more of a masculine, divine masculine look that's more of the logical and then there is the the feminine. So you may see something like my feminine kind of had a moment there being like, hey, this looks like a voice. This looks like a song to me. That's kind of more shapes and more abstract thinking. But both matter. Some people will take it in a significant direction, but for them, it made sense. And for you, it may have made sense that day because, hey, you know, they see this shape and they go, I sense... Uh, 
the Vulcans, you know what I mean? Live long and prosper. And then they would find a picture of live long and prosper like in here or, you know, something other significant would validate that for them and they carry on and they keep making videos because it worked for them. I'm just saying there's many ways to look at this, but obviously I'm going to go more in the direction of the logical way because I'm trying to learn the actual charts and learn the science. What are they actually logically displaying here? Here is another significant anomaly that happened. Something else I'm concerned about. But again, it's during, and you can see also very, very faintly, there is that background radiation there too. Very, very significant. So one more, one more note though, the background radiation here, which you can see it's a wider, fuzzier, greener looking band. That's actually Earth's background frequency, a 7.838 hertz-ish frequency. And you see it kind of wanes. It, it gets stronger and it gets weaker. And that's normal too, because when the sun is on the side of the earth that this instrument is on, it will have more data. And when it's on the night side, it should be a little bit less intense, I would say. So these blobs of information, those are daytime significant for this area. The sun creates more data for sure, which is fine. And then there's areas of the night where things are a little bit quieter. But again, during the nights, there's still weird stuff going on and is a concern to this study. So any sort of significant amplifications of the Earth's frequency happening, you can see that there's actually a pulse going on that's registering in the Schumann resonances or the natural Earth frequencies which are mixed in to all of these. It's a scale though, so it's significant. So here's, here's one, this long line here, the next one long line right here. These are the natural frequencies. And you can see that the natural and unnatural frequencies are kind of mixing on this one. And again, natural and unnatural frequencies mixing on this one. The strongest of them is the first note or the 7.83, so therefore horizontally here you can see it's the brightest. That's normal. So we always watch the primary Schumann resonance or the primary earth frequency and it shifts in amplification because when it's being amplified, that should suggest that more sunlight and more activity is hitting the atmosphere, causing the planet to ring like a bell and allow its scale of notes to go a little bit louder. It's like, hey, strumming a guitar. You're either going to strum it really hard and that would be a really significant day of solar wind or you're going to strum it really lightly. But it's still going to make the same sound technically. Just different amplitudes. If that makes sense. I'm constantly explaining this because I constantly get new followers. So those of you who are like, oh, she's talked about this a million times. Just listen to the soothing sound of my voice. Let's continue. The amplification of the primary earth frequency is obvious and uniform, which again is not normal. The uniformity of this is also showing me the artificialness that could be happening here. Because I have a trained eye, I've watched this for years, and this is normal. These waveforms look exactly alike nearly, nearly, which isn't common. Like over and over and over and over, all four of these the first four Schumann resonances or earth frequencies are amplifying the exact same way, which means uniformly the energy is increasing in the atmosphere, in my opinion, which is allowing this cascade to happen. Now, they aren't going to the same amplitude every time, significantly lower every, for each of the notes in the scale, which makes sense because that's how the energy is meant to dissipate in our atmosphere. So first, the primary, it hits an amplitude of a 24. The secondary during that is hitting an amplitude of a 15. The tertiary is hitting an amplitude of 11. And the quaternary is hitting an 8, an amplitude of 8. Now, this is nanoteslas, I'm pretty sure, is the measurement of amplitude. Those of you who are following and have physics in your background, nanotesla. I'm almost sure that's the measurement they're using, but they don't label it. And I've contacted them 
it's been a whole thing but you need to also be able to speak Russian to speak to these people and thankfully some of you and my followers also do have that in your portfolio so we've gotten that uh even that language barrier covered for the science of this which is good but it's taken a while so overall what's happening looks somewhat normal I would say for the scale behavior and the way the energy is dissipating but again the cleanness of this and the precision of this is unusual and if we want to look back to those significant moments that's what this moment was and I was telling you this is very mechanical looking it's on and then it's off you know what I mean it's on and it's off you can see here again amplitude for a very short amount of time how how look how narrow these these peaks are so these are very very quick that this happened and laser like almost in a way which again to me isn't natural isn't coming from the sun so that's also what we're watching is stuff that doesn't seem to be coming from the sun stuff that looks inorganic because it makes people behave weird and it's probably designed to do that <laughs> there's a few different factors that we watch the first four frequencies of the Schumann with we watch their quality which is this chart we watch the actual frequency shift slightly because the atmosphere is more of a liquid instead of a solid so it has a little bit of give so the frequencies will actually move around a little bit as well but not significantly not significantly at all like within you know 0.4 of a hertz you know what I'm saying 0.5 of a hertz difference from its baseline it's never that significant but it is important the amplitudes what move moves around the most obviously and the most interesting to study so that was Russia Tomsk Russia now we have this instrument here in you can see Kum Kumiana Italy which is right up against the Alps here this data and the Russian data sometimes corroborate and sometimes do, does not okay wow so weirdness is happening this is not normal I can't even use this for my new students to discuss this with you because this is not normal as you can see as an example this is over many days each one of these little squares is a day so this kind of gives you a better view weird stuff was happening again on the 10th okay is that the 10th or the 9th yeah 10th okay so this is weird this is data missing this is a problem not even as weird as it got today though unfortunately now it looks like we're this this particular resource is no good for us today but I will show you that significantly there is still even though the data is missing around this it's almost like it looks like they've cut it free like this is very strange what you're seeing here horizontally is 50 Hertz with a decibel level of I want to say minus 40 so it's below human ears zero and above is like when you start hearing things physically so it's below the ability for human ears but you can still physically feel it in your your cells and animals that are smaller than you can still perceive this even so this is not uncommon in Italy this is what their power grid is running at it's at running at 50 Hertz so it's making a noise okay and it's making a noise constantly because they do not turn off the power you know what I'm saying but significantly here there's also something happening at 100 Hertz which I've never seen before I don't actually know how to explain that to you unless the power grid also is running at 100 Hertz all of a sudden and there's two power grids now running in in Italy I haven't been keeping up but those Italians out there following me let me know if this is making any sense to you but we are having significant data loss for you today and this is a signification of me that there is something going on te technologically on earth today and there's a reason why I'm making this video there always is a reason I want you to know I am a psychic medium and I am more in my feminine than in my masculine even though it doesn't sound like I am and I feel and I intuit things and yesterday I was being prepared to do this video for you for a reason and that sun diving object was not even in my mind I didn't know so that sun diving a comet is 
a significant anomaly and I'm seeing all the way around it all my other data showing me that there's something going on. Here is another example. These are the Schumann resonances or the earth frequencies from now six other locations, not Italy, not Russia, okay? We're going California, Saudi Arabia, Lithuania, Alberta, Canada, Northland, New Zealand, and who Lului, I think it's how you say it. Actually, not sure how to say this, but in South Africa. Lului, it looks how you say it, but I might be wrong. I'm going to have to call up my South African bestie and ask her actually how to say that. After this video, I promise I'll do that. Because I care and I genuinely want to know. And South Africa is the biggest, most significant thing in this study sometimes. South Africa is a node on our planet that is super underrated. If you guys are aware of the Adams calendar, it's located in South Africa. I think there's a significant reason for it. And I think humanity, it's like it's a major electromagnetic node on our planet. Because every year when it gets to be their summertime, because it is right now, we're about to be at the solstice. Their data just spikes in activity they're just getting a ton of radiation down there and sometimes the data just blacks it out i'll be honest with you but this is the evidence from south africa this is number six that was that significant purple line i just showed you so this significant purple line is leagues above all the other countries that we're monitoring you can see um, there's a few countries that look like they're baselining and giving us a zero right now so we're missing data from two countries. But when this spiked on the 10th, on Sunday, today's Tuesday, so when this spiked in South Africa, it was hitting a, a figure of 588 significance. It's measuring the, the amplitude, but it doesn't say what units it's using. Ironically. But it is telling you it's measuring the frequencies between 0.3 and 36 hertz. So the Russian one, it shows you between 0 and 40. This chart will show you between 0 and 36. The amplification potential that's happening with those frequencies, like what's the behavior? There's a significant reason why we're watching these extremely low frequencies, and they have to do with our brain waves. So... When you see all these frequencies coming in, you're like, okay, you see random stuff flying into the sun. Okay, great. There is something significant going on in the, in the heavens, and it's going to affect us and our consciousness, right? So this is the Global Consciousness Project, if you guys are unfamiliar. This is a ran these are random number generators all over the world. And when these random numbers get close to each other in likeness, basically, like all of a sudden every random number generator is making the number 50 that is extreme coherence that means that in a way quantumly where there is a moment of coherence because all of a sudden these random number generators are producing the same thing and then when those numbers start to vary that's when we know that our collective consciousness is likely varying and you're probably not having those coherent moments with your coworkers. okay so this is really fun, and if you do work in a public place with a bunch of people, have this on your phone, just check it. When things start getting a little heated, if you have the coherency yourself to have a moment of clarity and check your phone, you'll likely see that this dot is probably in the red at that moment, and you'll probably see notifications that there's a solar flare happening at that time. Solar flares, like I'm a married woman, I ex and I have six animals, and they're all under the age of five. So if things can get a little intense at my house, things get a little bit intense, and most of them are males as well. So we've got a lot of expressive masculine energy at this house, which is the sun in a way too, is the solar flare. So when we've got our uh, expressive energy here at this house, and I'm getting frustrated, my feminine starting to feel overwhelmed. <laughs> that's when I curl up and I go to my phone for comfort and boom there's the solar flare that just happened I get evidence immediately for the reactions and the behaviors in my household so it's very comforting to have that and slowly I'm sure over the years using this as a way to correct my biorhythms I'll be able to see it before it's even happening and be able to not get I would say 
swept up into it. So that's kind of the goal of why I track all this stuff as a psychologist and sociologist, you know, as a healthcare practitioner, knowing when you're good so you can offer a good helping hand is key. So this particular, this particular uh, thing, I'm going to make it bigger for you. There's another chance for us to figure out what the heck's going on around our planet right now and causing this data, like for Italy to just shut its, tr I don't even know what it's trying to do with its data. I'm not even sure what it's trying to show us at that point. It's like hiding it almost. So this is a particular graph of our planet. Okay, so the white side of the circle that's the sun facing side so you can see all of the stuff is kind of hitting on the front sun facing side this is our magnetosphere this is the magnetic basically protective barrier that we naturally are creating with the core of the earth and the pressure from the solar wind it creates this effect or this field this force field around us and actually more pressure on that field can increase the strength of that force field so they kind of work in unison together. That's the hope. Some of the energy will build up behind the planet as the energy is swooping around, swooping around this planetary field, and then it gathers behind the planet. So often you'll see redness behind the Earth as sort of the, um, it's almost like the propellant in a way too. It's kind of evidence that we are propelling through some denser solar wind that friction of that process so it's very cool and sometimes very significant and sometimes this magnetic field around us starts to get closer starts to collapse it starts to look a little bit more uh, weathered but right now it's looking strong and uh, I'm glad so let's continue we had some significant aurora also this month already and those of you who have had the pleasure thank you for sending me your pictures those of you who haven't you may get the opportunity yet to see some more Aurora this month. It's a significant month of the year. So I would say mystical happenings are on the on the rise, I would say. The magic, you know, what's going on in the North Pole. You know, you should actually be more concerned about the North Pole is all I have to say. We love to talk about the South Pole and how conspiracy rich it is. But I'll tell you something, the North Pole is being neglected on purpose so I just want you to know that and let's continue if you need any of these resources you can go to my link tree link tree ascension diaries boom space weather links start your own channel and outdo me I go for it I have I'm giving you literally the tools to do so have fun here's my Instagram please follow if you haven't yet here is our global incident map for the moment and we're going to look at some earthquakes we've gotten out of the earthquake bath that we were just in from the last impact of solar wind and radiation now we may be awaiting we're not awaiting anything significant at this time in my opinion but like i said after i upload this we could have a huge solar flare and then we'll have an earthquake the next day but i have been dreaming about earthquakes regularly and so I'll dream about it, and then that day there is an earthquake that has a similar number that I was seeing in my dream. I've been being fed the actual magnitude number, okay? But unfortunately, last night, or no, I would say a couple nights ago now, I woke up with the magnitude 15 on my lips. Magnitude 15. I was in a magnitude 15 earthquake wherever I was. But I looked it up, and you can't go over 10 and it's because of the way that the earth is measured. Like you just can't have a wave bigger than 10. That's how they broke up the system. So in my dream, was I on a planet that was bigger than earth? And that a 15 wasn't even a significant earthquake because the planet was so huge? That's what it felt like. So that was an interesting thing to discover. And if you have that ability, you're waking up thinking about this or that. In the astral, you're taking that information back and you're using it. What is it that you're tracking? What is it that your deep subconscious, your dream world is actually tracking for you? For me, it seems to be earthquakes. So keep an eye on earthquakes, please. Let's see. Reykjavik. East Pacific Rise. 
loyalty islands interesting so yeah the biggest area of significance has been over here but we've got a lot of premonitions that the big one or the san andreas fault is active and there is concern about that so keep your prayers specific if you can about that now we're going to go to spaceweather.com because this is a great resource if i'm not making a video that day or posting on instagram or posting on telegram or whatever because it'll tell you the solar wind speed right away if this is over 400 you're going to be uncomfortable period keep an eye on that the first story of the day also they tell you they're not this is not written by an ai this is written by an actual person including all of my work too Earth is entering a stream of debris from the Geminid meteor shower. Okay, so we're having a meteor shower as well. Was that the comet? Not really, in my opinion. I don't think they were actually connected. But they could have been. I, I suggest they are likely are connected. That does make logical sense. I believe they may have been. Earth is entering a stream of debris. Many more are coming. December 13th and 14th, you may see up to 100 meteors an hour in the dark sky. Okay? Very significant. Go look for meteors if you're interested. Every great mystery novel has an unexpected twist. Apparently, the same is true for meteor showers. There is a new twist with this particular Geminid meteor shower schedule. It has been puzzling astronomers. The source of all of these, these rocks is potentially this larger object called 3200 Phaethion. And it, this object is apparently not what they think it is. Here it is, this gigantic object the orbit of Phaleon was such a close match to those of the Geminid debris stream no other conclusion was possible except it was a rocky asteroid okay asteroids are not supposed to make meteor showers so they're saying it's an asteroid and not a comet. This particular object. They're understanding it to be. So this asteroid doesn't have a tail and it doesn't spew meteoroids, but this particular object does. So it's probably a mix of both, in my opinion. It's probably a mix of both. It does sprout a tail when it plas cl passes close to the sun. It's a rock comet. Okay, so interesting how boring that is in a way, or lazy that is. Homie eh, was not convinced that this was a good enough explanation. The tail we see today could never supply enough dust to get our geminid meteor shower. So they think that what they're seeing is still not a good enough explanation for what we're experiencing raining over us. Oh, so now they're going back to square one and trying to explain what this object is. How convenient for them. The best way to test this idea... Okay, wait. Perhaps something hit the asteroid a millennia ago, making it rapidly rotate. fascinating so they're still trying to figure out exactly how all of this mess is happening which is kind of funny this is such a funny graphic too it just looks like a farting rock very scientific but this is what happens you know we're getting a little bit of an insight to the conversation here now I'm just going to quickly go through the earthquake monitoring here Russia is significant, being weird. 
overall ooh, look california sorry sierra la laguna baja california sir in mexico is behaving oddly that's an area of the fault line i'm concerned about so that's interesting that's a, around the san andreas fault line i'm pretty sure the base of it in a way okay thailand is showing me absolutely nothing or everything i can't tell they're on the left there and yeah no other significant anomalies so far now we're going to look at the lightning this is where it's all grounding Interesting, we're having some sort of issue here with the visual. I can't tell what it wants me to do to try and give you a clearer visual. I'm sorry about that, but we can still kind of see, so we're just going to keep going. You can see here that obviously the tip, there's actually a few significant storms happening, a lightning storm. So the lightning is grounding in at this time. So here at the base of Australia, here at the tip of South America, and here in the ocean between South America and Africa, which could be, uh, I would say, a significant area of the Earth that maybe is underrated. So we're going to move on. The meteors that are being watched, there's some sigma hydrids, monoceratoids, ceratids, the geminids, the puppid and velids. So there's a few that we were dealing with, with meteor showers. It's not just the Geminids. There's actually other little group groups here coming through as well. So this may be a website you want to track for those of you who are interested. Oh, actually, that already happened. I'm looking in the wrong order. The dates are all mixed up here. Isn't that funny? So yeah, it looks like the Leonid, Leonis Menorids are coming next. And you may see a little bit of the Puppet Velids a little bit. Not as much, though. It probably will all get mixed up with what you think is the Geminids. And how can you really tell? I think it's probably where in the sky they show up. Let's look at the map over the last, whoops, the last month when it comes to solar flare significance. Since the 1st of December, we had an M1. The largest one we've had is an M5.5 on the 8th, where all that data kind of also went missing. So we're doing pretty good so far in December. Nothing, no X x class solar flares yet but again i'm making this video i would almost lay money that there's probably going to be some sort of significant solar flare coming in the next 24 hours if i'm doing a video right now it's just the pattern i've also noticed you can watch the satellites going across your sky also with this particular tool if you're tracking a satellite you don't know what's going on that might be an option you can also go to the uh, what is it the Starlink website as well to track all of their particular meteors or sorry their satellites a few more views just to finish today is the the helio not the heliocentric model but the geocentric model of our astrology here so you can see significantly where from the earth's perspective where all these other planets are magnetically oriented towards us so Towards the sun, if you're looking at the sun in the sky right now, behind it to us in a way is Mars. Our, our moon is in that sector of the sky. Ceres is in that section of the sky. Significantly also is Mercury, Pluto, and Venus. Venus has been very bright the last couple days. It's been engaging me. Now you see away from the sun, we've got Saturn, Neptune, and then more behind us is Jupiter, Uranus as well. So there is some energy behind us with Uranus and Jupiter that may be of uh, significance to you. Uh, for earthquakes and earthquake emergencies, I'd recommend you follow this gentleman on Twitter and on YouTube. For the, for the M7 earthquakes that I did dream about, M7.4 actually that happened over by the Philippines was his last major video and kind of explanations a little bit more of earthquake science if you're interested oh this is a view of the sky in alaska i'm just going to skip that one this is significant if you want to try and watch the aurora get live in alaska if you can't go up there this website might be of uh, interest to you Whoop. 
So this video is sponsored in part by my husband's company, Conscious Crypto. You can join his Conscious Crypto Academy right now. We're taking new students. For those of you who are ready to begin your crypto path and or you've begun your crypto path and you're like, okay, I'm going to need some help to try and utilize and make the most of my efforts here. Now, there are passive income opportunities that people don't know about when it comes to this technology and some of these projects that are launching. And Jace has been keeping track of this because as a young man who's building his family, it's more of a it's more of a motivation for him to find opportunities to multiply his wealth and also invest in companies that will do that versus companies that are taxing you or tracking you or telling you you can't have a home sort of thing. The market is about to open up to have the technological ability to, for you to buy property and home and homes and stuff via your, like, other than the U.S. dollar and other than those, like, I would say those currencies for the countries, there's now ways to store your wealth in ways that can be relevant to any currency, wherever you are. It can be transferred into currency wherever you want to be. And for whatever project you're trying to invest your energy into. So if this sounds important to you, and this is ringing your bells like it rang for him, literally this man, it's like the mission I do with space weather. It's the same thing. Like it's something that is internal. It's something that you were born to do. And when it arrives, there's almost like there's nothing that can deter you from pursuing this mission. And that is him to a T with this. And he is absolutely passionate about it. He is ready to take on new students. He's ready to even do one-on-one -on -one trainings. He even has a co-coach to help with the, the influx of people and the fear-mongering going on about the economy and how the currencies are going to work. They're, the people in this space and who are doing this, this education and this crypto stuff and finding the good spots, finding those high vibrational areas where these companies are thriving – that is, that is optimism. That is joy. That is people actively pursuing opportunity, I would say, versus the fear mongering and this like hopelessness that's being uh, projected out there with the mainstream media. So financially, if it's not your thing, it wasn't mine to be a financier and kind of move things around and money wise it wasn't interesting to me but now I understand the movement of this energy and I've seen this dynamic and I'm comparing it to space weather for me that's what I was trained to do so he was trained to see this and see those charts and and read them and know them something internally he understands and I understand the space weather charts so with our powers combined we're trying to figure out the comparison and the significance between those two things and certainly when there is major earthquakes and major solar flares, there is ch changes in the market. New things, new projects are released. Um, major meetings with all of those heads of all those countries are happening. Um, decisions are make, being made and uh, things are being signed in and brought to law, lawmakers on, on all of this. So there is significance. We're in the, in the process of this, in the becoming process of this and how the new earth is going to exchange its currencies. Now, I want to tell you that there are people who are deathly afraid of losing power or sharing anything that they have, I would say, sequestered from the collective. And there is this mentality of, in a way, having to steal and store wealth in order to survive in these caches of you know, hidden wealth forever. And this particular behavior is what is slowly being deprogrammed from the very, very, very top of finance as well, all the way to the bottom because of the implementation of quantum technology and the quantum computers. And you guys are hearing more about that, I'm sure, because it is a huge topic. But just so you know, from my side of things, this is inevitable and you can be afraid of it or you can find those who are excited and feel like they know exactly what to do and 
see what they're up to and it may be worth even just five percent of your effort or your resources of your time of your energy today tomorrow just to move a little bit of attention into this category because you may have a family you want to provide for in the future you may have children that you'd like some sort of stockpile of resources so they can when they're mentally ready pursue what it is they were born to create and do on this planet because they're probably telling you about it since they were a little kid that they want to help they want to do this they want to do that you have it ready for them have it ready somewhere and have it not stored away in this stagnant area because the uh, the value of those currencies like the U.S. dollar are going down and they're promising people that they will continue going down in value so if you want to maintain your value that you have now transferring it laterally into this holding place of this digital asset it seems to be able to hold it in time a little bit differently but also make it more of a of an energy that flows and continues to feed the ecosystem instead of like you having a something that you're hiding from the ecosystem you're in putting it in there and allowing it to grow and flourish and breed almost it's been fascinating to watch if what I'm saying makes sense to you and is interesting to you we do have the time and energy to take you on and help you at this time which is significant so heed my words go to join.consciouscrypto.info slash app dash one if you want this specific web page you can go to join.consciouscrypto.info the website to get more information a free uh, orientation video even that Jace has done to give you more of an energy match so you can see his energies kind of see his intention and sign up but they're free calls so do the free call talk to him in person tell him what your portfolio is tell him what your goals are and he will go listen I want to bring you into my school and I'm going to show you all this stuff that I can tell you actually don't know yet and you can do it on your own in your own time set up as much of your wealth I don't have to be a part of it we don't have to see how you're moving your money we're just showing you where you can move it if you want to do these new things with it if you want to live if you want to thrive if you want to feed and engage the economy or you want a chance basically sinking like the Titanic with all of your money and if you know the significance of Titanic you may know that that is actually a pretty good metaphor for this situation that we're in and what I'm witnessing. I'm not trying to spook you. We're going to be fine. I'm still going to stay here and figure out solutions for whatever happens, no matter what. But if this is, if you're resonating with this, which is what people do, literally people dream about the cryptos that they're trying to get into. It's like they're being shown and then they reach out to Jason. They're like, please help me. I got to get into this. I don't even know where to start. And he knows he knows exactly what to do to help you he can do it he can do it so fast and no matter your size of your portfolio or your experience with the with the economy and everything there's stuff that you probably don't know that this man is being like divinely guided to lead and teach and help with have we had like people are very happy and we don't want to be a significant part of your day-to-day -day life either i don't want you to obsess over the economy and all of this it could be something you do over the weekend and then boom, it's ready for you. You set it and you forget it and that's that's all you need. And just getting ahead of this massive economic shift that's likely going to happen, the year of the dragon. Um, the fiscal new year is January, but the Chinese or the lunar new year is later in the year. But the fiscal new year is important. It's called the fiscal new year because the whole economies of the world are focusing on that day as well. So just a heads up, you have until January 1st, basically, to make some of these shifts, is my understanding. And then we'll see how the fiscal new year behaves, and I'll update you how I feel about that in the future. So thank you all so much for coming to today's video. Again, go to my Patreon to sign up. You can join for free, and there is significant options for you, a budget option, a average option, and then, of course, the added option of these workshops and just supporting me as a, a little bit more significantly if you have the potential I would appreciate it very much just these uh just keeping me trucking keeping me going along and keeping my household afloat as we do and manage literally the revelation of quantum technology that is happening before our eyes 
and we're adjusting the best that we can while also significantly the solar cycle is peaking and so more plasma than ever is going to be available which in my opinion is just more matter to make more stuff with more rain so we can grow more food and supplies so we can build more stuff so we can reinvest back into the land with even more seed and more fertilizer than we have ever before that's kind of the vibe overall to summarize (laughs) what's coming according to me so again thank you all so much for being here and i will be seeing you on the next video much love